everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about painting backgrounds and middle grounds in a landscape. So for many of us, that means we're looking at distant mountains and maybe some fields or rolling hills moving towards the viewer. Now, depending on the landscape reference photo you're using, you may be looking at very different things from what I have in my example. But no matter what, we're going to be talking about what makes things look like they're in the distance, how to blend color, and how to create overlapping landscape elements. One of the core principles we need to look at is something called atmospheric perspective, which this photo shows really well. Here, we're looking at overlapping foothills and mountains receding into the distance, and we can see very clearly that the further away the landform is, the bluer, grayer, and lighter the color is. And it's simply because between the viewer and the far distance, we're seeing more and more atmosphere. And the atmosphere is filled with particles. The particles might be dust, pollen, gases, all kinds of things that are going to create this atmospheric effect. So as a painter, we need to use this to our advantage to help make things look farther away. Now, you're going to need to look at your reference photo and consider how distant are my landforms. One of the things you can do, though, as an artist is exaggerate. You want to make something look farther away, give it more atmospheric perspective. Now, in this case, you're basically just blending in sky color. So hopefully you still have some of that sky color in your palette you can use that to blend into those distant mountains. In my example, the distant mountain isn't so distant, so I will be blending some sky color here and there, but it's not as far as maybe the ones in this other photo we're looking at right now. Get started by mixing up more of your sky color. Make sure you have a range of values and saturation. Next, you're gonna start mixing some different greens and blue tones that you can see in your distant mountains. Now the bottom line here is you just simply need to look at your reference photo and try to match all the colors that you see in that particular area. You can also blend and mix as you go. Notice again my palette is set up with the paint colors right out of the tube, the root colors around the edges, and my mixing areas in the middle. If you haven't yet, go back and touch up the clouds in your sky. Sometimes a fresh look at your painting after taking a break, you can really notice and see some of the areas for improvement. So take some time to do that now. Remember, if you're blending wet paint onto dry, you might have to wet your brush at times to blend it in or use the dry brush technique to fan it out. To start the background, you're gonna begin with defining the horizon line. So at this point, you can overlap the sky and then fill in the distant mountain area with a base color. This gives you wet paint to mix into. Then you're going to go ahead and mix sky color right into that wet paint to start to give you that sense of atmospheric depth. Then you're going to start adding some additional colors that you're seeing in your reference image. You can blend right into the wet paint and create as much texture as you'd like. The farther away something is, the less texture you're generally going to see because of that atmospheric fog. Again, my mountain is a little bit closer, so I'm painting with more texture. Now there's two general approaches here to painting. One is called direct painting, where you're really focusing in on a very small area and painting that until it's 100% done. It's kind of like the grid system. Others are going to bounce around to different areas of the section of the painting you're on and kind of go back and forth. Either way is fine, but you have to be aware of the drying time of acrylic paint. Acrylic paint dries so fast that it's going to limit how you can blend. So pay attention to that and possibly use water or add additional paint to help make blending possible. As you paint, you're going to continue to build texture that's going to suggest implied detail maybe a suggestion of trees or even smaller landforms. An important feature though for your horizon line is to blend some sky color right into that top edge. Because if you think about it, the top of a mountain is a curve. It's not a rigid point, at least for the mountains here on the East Coast. So imagine that is curving back into space so the top of the mountain is farther away from the viewer than the bottom of the mountain. So blend that sky color right into that edge. Continue to build color and texture and value until you achieve the look that you're after. Make sure you take the time to view it from a distance occasionally. One of the difficulties of painting is not only paying attention to the color that you're using, but also the value. Make sure you know how to adjust that value lighter or darker and shift the color as needed. It's really, really important that you also consider how to shift the saturation of the paint. Remember, saturation can be reduced 
by adding the complement or opposite of any color. You can also use things like gray or black, but that's going to give it a different look. Continue painting and building up that contrast on your canvas itself. If you don't have any contrast, areas that are much lighter and areas that are much darker, everything's just sort of going to blend in. Now, as I'm starting to paint this flatter land, as I move from background into middle ground, I'm starting to paint with smoother strokes, often more horizontal strokes. Those horizontal brush strokes are going to give more of a sense of flat land compared to the texture tree covered hills that I was painting earlier. As I paint some of the details in my middle ground area, I still want to consider the fact that the farther something is, the less detail the viewer can see. So again, implied detail. In a landscape painting, especially an acrylic one, it's important that you paint back to front because the areas closer to the viewer overlap those in the back. So work your way down away from the horizon line, painting the things that are the farthest away before you paint the things that are closer. Yes, you can go back and touch it up, but it just makes it a little bit easier. In my painting, there's this barn on the right, and I'm saving that because I have some different trees that are going right up to it, and I want that barn to have a more crisp, detailed look. As you wrap up the background and middle ground area, take a look again from a distance and consider, does this give the sense of distance that I'm after? Do I have implied detail? Can you see some of the things in this painting that I want the viewer to see? Are you leaving out distracting details? So you guys ultimately are going to be successful if you are careful observers. This isn't about controlling the paint perfectly. This is about noticing color, texture, value. This is about adding what you see. Put it simply, painting is putting the right color in the right spot. So guys, good luck. Next time we're going to finish this up. Have a great day.